the Sudan, we don't have really very many to speak on. We had um, a little bit of kind of line of cut. Um, there is no, there wasn't any wood to use, nor uh, etching. But when I went to Italy, I was introduced to etching by a friend, a Canadian friend that did the most beautiful etchings. And I was mainly a painter. I wasn't a printmaker. And I was intrigued by the work that she, the work that she did. So I decided to try it a little bit. And I remember the first time I did a small, tiny little plate called Café Roma. I was terrified. I had no idea of how everything functions or work or anything. The first time I pulled a print, it was like magic. I mean, I, I didn't know how everything really worked. Gradually, my work uh, grew bigger and bigger. By the time I left, you will see the biggest plate there. Um, uh, it's called Composition Without Arabic Calligraphy. So that's how I came into um, printmaking and expanded it when I went to America because America had different things. The most exciting thing that happened in America was introducing photography into printmaking. You try and make something that doesn't go and you learn from your mistakes. In fact, I say that in printmaking, you don't make mistakes because you can take everything out, add to it, and develop it and you get more exciting things. So that's how I developed it. And through printmaking, I learned more about painting. I would say that printmaking really developed my painting to a better level. I work very fast when I know the subject and uh, what I'm doing with the image. But the plate really tells me how to proceed with it. I mean, I could make a hundred sketches. When I start doing a print, and I never do make a sketch for a print, I start the print directly. But if I do, it never follows the, the, the sketch. It takes a life of its own. In printmaking, if you make a, like, if you just float somewhere else, you make a mistake. It's a, a, a mechanical, technical thing. You have to really concentrate and just pay attention to what you do. Black and white for me is the classic way and it's the richest um, medium, the richest color for me in all the printmaking. Color is fascinating and kind of like deceiving rather than giving you the actual reality of the object or the subject that you're doing. And it has a a richness that, that I don't see in color. With black, you can go into the deepest black and the lightest tone in a few seconds. And you get the richness that, and the mystery also carries mystery for me. And um, tonality is the essence of black and white. You have to learn tonality. That's actually how I learned about painting through uh, doing black and white prints. They asked me if uh, I wasn't an artist, what, what would I do? And um, I said music. I had this friend who was with me in the school. He was one of the most famous uh, musicians in Sudan. I listened a lot of Bob Dylan. And Bob Dylan, for me, his words, this kid was 15, writing this incredible music. Bob Dylan, for me, was like a, a, 
a miracle or something. I used to listen to him in Sudan. I had the sound, the sound was like the rhythm and all that was so fascinating. When I came into America, I mean, I bought more of his, his albums and I lived really through his music. And that's what, you know, the result of, you know, death, tombstone blues. Anything that has blues or sadness, I used in the, in the way. A sailor happened by chance. As I said, I never um, thought of a sailor, but a sailor thought of me. And in 78, we were about 13 different artists from different parts of the world, came together in a small fishing village. Stay, stay there about a month and did work. I continued with Asila for about 22 years. And then I stopped. I, uh, I, I decided that somebody else from Morocco should continue with this project and, and deal with the, the studio because I ran it for 27, 20. Actually, it was 27 years, not 20. Yeah, and um, that's my contract with the singer. So it was, it was an experiment that was, it opened really uh, a world for me and for them because they never had anything in printmaking or know anything about printmaking. Now, Sudan, I would say that it's, it's my DNA. I mean, I stayed in America longer than in Sudan, uh, 52 years. And still, I feel it in all my body. And it comes through my fingers. Everything, I can recall it, I can live it while I'm doing it. The subject, whether I'm doing it in, in America or here in London or in Asila, depending all on the atmosphere and what I'm living. But I'm Sudanese, it comes through me. That's what makes it Sudanese. Well, because I did uh, this uh, thing of Asila in 78 and in you know, 27 years later. I said, why can't I do that in my own country? I mean, what's stopping me? Except money, which is the devil of all devils. So I decided whatever I make, I send there and try and make a studio for Sudanese artists, children, and whoever is willing to come and live. And um, I was running for like two years to acquire a piece of land. And they made me pay blood for it, blood. My brother, uh, Faisal, an architect, uh, he designed uh, the studio and uh, a couple of uh, floors for uh, uh, rooms for people to stay or whatever so that it supports the studio. And um, probably in a, a year or two years maximum, everything will be ready for my uh, equipment in New York to go to the Sudan.